What's that? Who there? Whoa. One thing you mentioned before I'd love to double click on is you talked about your you have a personalized medicine doctor. And I think, you know, that was one of the first times I've heard that phrase. And so do you want to talk about like what what does that doctor do for you compared to, you know, the the general care, primary care doctor that most people have? Yeah, I'm a huge nerd. Um, I'm really into the biohacking thing. Um, I what I do with my doctor is what I would call the difference between like old medicine and new medicine. Old medicine is reactive, disease oriented, hacking at the branches of fixing your symptoms versus like the roots of like actually being healthy. And new medicine is proactive, it's personalized, it's biometric, uh, and it's not just fixing you when you're sick, it's about like how to live like a fully, I am not optimized, but like having vitality, like being healthy, like being your, you know, your best self. Um, so what I do with my doctor is we do blood tests. We drill down into my different biomarkers to understand, um, you know, where we might get a lift, whether that's like doing an in food intolerance panel, um, you know, supplementing with specific vitamins based on, uh, my blood panel. Um, I do a lot of experimentation and sleep and diet. Um, my, I played football for like 12 years. So I'm like pretty set with my exercise routine. <laughs> I don't touch it. Um, 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 but that's, that's, that's a big part of like what we're drilling into together. Um, I also think that a lot of, uh, personalized medicine physicians are at the, like Peter Tia, for instance, or like at the forefront of today's research. Oftentimes when I go to speak to doctors, I feel like they are uh, still kind of living in medicine from like 20, 30 years ago, uh, and not medicine today. Um, Yeah. I, I love this stuff too. I'm, I'm curious, you know, if you're willing to share, like, what are some of the 80, 20 things that you've, you found out from these tests that, you know, I know it's personalized. And so maybe it only applies to you or, or someone with a similar profile health profile, but what are some things that you found out that were shocking to you going into the process? Hmm. So one thing I learned from genetic testing, um, that has changed, I think a large part of how I live my life is I have a, um, not incredibly rare, but fairly rare uh, genetic mutation called the war- the warrior gene, and so people with sounds the pretty war- pretty dope. <laughs> uh, so it can be dope. So the people with the warrior gene produce uh, less MAO monoamine oxidase than usual. Uh, monoamine oxidase uh, goes in and it cleans up your like dopamine and serotonin. So if you have less than normal, that means you have higher than average dopamine and serotonin. Um, and so like in studies, they show that like if people have like trauma as a kid, people who have the warrior gene are like significantly more likely to like commit violent crimes because they're all hopped up on dopamine and serotonin all day. When I learned this, and it's, it's, it's very challenging because, you know, it's hard to take like any individual variable, but looking at that, my whole life kind of came into focus because my whole life, it's been like somebody, uh, like hooked up jumper cables to my nervous system from the moment that I I open my eyes in the morning to the moment I relent to sleep every night. (laughs) Um, and so learning, learning about that led me down a path of really investigating, uh, I'll call like investigating calm and investigating my parasympathetic nervous system, like the rest and digest nervous system. And like things I learned is that like, I shouldn't ever have coffee, <laughs> uh, that I don't need coffee, that it decreases my emotional valence. I jump down people's throats. I'm bouncing off the wall and I'm frenetic. Um, and, uh, and I started to realize like I'm addicted to caffeine. I'm addicted to, um, to seeking like, you know, like exogenous supplements, like caffeine to, uh, to get me going because i like that heightened state. Um, and so, yeah, so that's like led me down a path of like optimizing my sleep and um, early on led me down a path of meditation, which that was like seven years ago, which cracked the door to something much deeper than just sort of optimizing my, you know, focus and emotional valence. Um, that's, that's one example. One of the benefits of the quantified self movement that I'm also super interested in, you know, with the levels and the eight sleeps and the aura rings, all these new companies is I think one of the things they're doing is making it a little bit more accessible for more people to be able to have access to their own personalized data. Do you use some of those products and what are your, what are your thoughts around those? Yeah. So first on accessibility of like blood testing, um, there's a really incredible company, um, 
Um, I'm friends with both the CEO and her husband called Parsley Health. Uh, they started in um, New York. I think they also have some beautiful spaces in LA, but they've also shifted to telemedicine where at a pretty affordable rate, you can go in and get your blood testing and do like functional medicine where they really similarly drill down into like, how do we understand your biometrics and optimize your health with both doctors and health coaches? So that might be an interesting one to check out for people who are interested in that. Um, uh, to answer your question about tracking, <laughs> um, so I've gone through a lot of the tracking and I've actually like peeled back a little bit. Um, the reason I peel back is that I've found that even with the sleep tracking, and I actually have an eight sleep pod on the way that I just ordered, so I'm even speaking too soon. But I've I've used like a dream electroencephalograph on my head while also cross checking it with like an aura sleep ring. Um, um, I have like built a lot of trackers for myself where I'll track how much time I spend in deep work during the day, uh, what time I wake up, what time I go to bed, my calories. Um, and even just like with the sleep tracking, I found that I would like develop orthosomnia. So insomnia driven by the tracking of your sleep. So more recently, what I've been working on is trying to like live a, a little calmer meditative pace. Um, and injecting like a little bit more of like the spontaneity in my life and not you know, like tracking everything that I do. Um, so now I use tracking more of as like a, as like a calibration. So like I recently got the whoop fitness band that tracks like heart rate variability, tested out for a while and looked at like what my heart rate availability is. And when I saw like, it's pretty good, it's healthy. <laughs> um, thought that maybe I didn't need to like continue tracking all the time, but that's just sort of where, where I'm at in my journey with it. That's a really interesting point. Cause, cause one thing I was thinking with it is, you know, it's, it's asymptotic, right? Like you optimize, optimize, you'll never get to a hundred percent. So you're always chasing. And like, at some point there's diminishing returns. And so I also wear the whoop and I feel like I was checking it pretty regularly early on. And then the numbers are all pretty consistent. So I'm like, yeah, why am I, why am I continuing to obsess over it? Well, it's almost like the people who want to use it are the people who shouldn't. Like if you're like a striver or a struggler, like your battle is probably the fact that you're an optimizer when you should be a satisficer. Right. And maybe people who are satisficers should maybe like optimize a little bit more. Um, so that's something I've been trying to be mindful of is being a more of a satisficer, not an optimizer, uh, you know, especially, you know, as someone who works in mental health care. Um, uh, I find that that is a critical um, practice for me and my mental health. 